Hello and welcome back to Deadfire. So, we're heading back to Nekataka. Actually, given that we're heading somewhere where we know, we can just say, head, take me to Nekataka. We're handing a couple of quests and then we're going to head northwest of Nekataka to our next ruins that we have to investigate. Yeah, so, hopefully that's us. Oh, we'll just watch that for a while. That's fun. Yeah, stop. In we go. So, uh, Queen's Birth, I think it's the Wild Mare we need to go to. Yeah. Oh, for both of them, actually. I think both quests are in the Wild Mare. Because uh, we've got two bounties. Could be wrong. We'll double check. Double check. Anyway, uh, Khan is in here somewhere, right? I think Abaco is the first. Who's Luca? Oh, it's pesky fly. Shoo, shoo. I must have done that several times by now. Ado, my hunter! To what do I owe this delight? Here, catch! I hope I will still find this disgusting when I am important enough to toast with the elite bounty hunters. He lifts the severed head by the hair, wincing all the while, and passes you a pouch of coins. I tell them all that the captain of your ship will always be my favorite hunter. Uh, what bounties do you have available? A sea troll has been making a name for himself raiding fishing villages with his minions. They call him Tahe. That's thief to the locals. I hear the Huana hate few things more than a food stealer. Warriors fan out to catch the fiend, but so far they have no luck. Tahe can't have roamed far from his latest raid on an island southwest of Nikitaka. Uh, well, I hope he enjoyed his last meal. Here's a head I was carrying around for no particular reason. You have done us both a favor. My esteem in the bounty community rises, and hunters come to buy me drinks. He chuckles to himself and passes you a pouch of coin. My friend, you have drained the wellspring and made us both very famous. If you have not spoken to her yet, find the gold pack knight Okauro in Sacred Stair. She can give you more work. Nice doing business with you, Abako. Oh, we're just done on that line. That was good. Yeah, that went very well. We're at 10,000 now. We're actually fairly rich. Hello. Don't you have a temple to find? I found him. I found Oswald. And? Where is he? Did you get my money? Yeah, he's flat broke, not copper to his name. That twisty old pig licker. I should have known. Can slams her feet fist down on the table. The utensils jump. She looks away, tears just budding on her eyelashes, then dashes them away with a shuddering sigh. After the brief storm of emotion has passed, she steadies herself and turns her hard eyes on you. Gods, but I'm dead tired of this wretched archipelago. She exhales a deep sigh. So, if you don't mind, I'll be taking my leave. May Wall's legion of creepy eyes watch your back and all that. Can gives you a curt nod and finishes the remainder of her drink with a gulp. She hustles out of the tavern without so much as a wave goodbye. Oh, goodbye. Oh, look at that. Three level ups. How lovely. So, uh, sleight of hand seems like the one here that we'll take, and then streetwise? Yeah, streetwise and diplomacy, I think, is where we're going with, our, with us. Mainly just so we can cover everything. Okay, and then we get a next one of these abilities. So we're already upgraded both of those, so we can't take another upgrade. Smoke cloud? That's alright. What's max level smoke cloud? It, it's like a small amount of road damage? Yeah, I don't really want to upgrade that. Withering Strike is 3 Guile? I mean, it's alright, but it's 3 Guile's worth. Interesting, I didn't... Oh, right, yeah. We, we did actually knock her, lock ourselves off from the other side there. What's Flurry of Blade? Those daggers at nearby enemies before teleporting. Oh, so it's like, damage everyone around you, then teleport away. I like that one. Anyway, what else have we got? Deep Wounds. So all damage will do raw damage over time. That gives us great synergy with the um, with the hunter, definitely, um, with uh, Ishiza, uh, because it means that um, they'll always get the fifty percent increased damage, which is nice if they're attacking what we're attacking. I think that's pretty good. I also think uncanny luck and tough are fairly good for us. Anything else I want? Um, probably not. There's some early ones that are okay. Backstab. Within two meters of the target. Yeah. But it must be done from stealth or invisibility. 
We could also take um, Crippling Strike, but I'm not sure if we need another strike. That one hobbles them, and then the next level is they bleed while moving, but not a lot of damage, or they uh, it also distract. No, I'm going to take Deep Wounds. Just extra, let's say 20% damage increase, and it's raw damage, so it will actually, you know, it affects everyone. Okay, mm -hmm. Edir, my most well-built character so far, in that he's invincible. Um, athletics, because it increases the power of his shield, if nothing else. And that'll put him at 100 deflection, which is lovely. And then survival. Well, yeah, or intimidate, I suppose. We'll give him intimidate. Then here, um, I'm bending. Draw strength, causing them to regenerate a portion of damage taken. Or it converts damage taken into healing. Uncanny Luck is actually fairly good because just being able to avoid 5% of attacks, 1 in 20 attacks do nothing. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty good. And then this one, Uncanny Armored Grace. So, lowers the armor recovery penalty. I haven't really noticed that being a problem for us. Hmm. Let's see if we got anything else that I'm looking at here back in the earlier ones. Uh, arms bearer maybe, but don't think we need it. Snakes reflexes, maybe. Uh, get rid of dexterity ones could be good. Ability to draw um people like armor. Okay, so that would lower armor rating when you draw people to us. Mule kick um is prone and disorientated. Yeah. Uh, charges. Fine. Vigorous defense is fine. A lot of these are just kind of fine. I don't really need an upgrade to them. I think I'm going to take uh, armored... Well, no, I'm going to take uncanny luck. I mean, it does give him a chance to crit, which is nice. Um, on a hit as well. So, given that his accuracy is fairly low, he's barely going to be getting any uh, crits. But... This, like, in fact, he'll probably have zero chance of crits, and this just basically gives him a crit chance. And then resistance. Yeah. And if he's mostly going to be in fights which are about, um, like, uh, out-sustaining other people, resistance and 5% hits to crits is fantastic, because if it's a very long fight, that then becomes, um, yeah, that becomes useful. Okay, let's take it. Right, and then Aloth. Aloth, um... Well, he has a lot of Arcana knowledge, nothing else. I was given a little bit of alchemy, but we already have an alchemy. It's like it just pushes Arcana knowledge up further. That's fine. Um, and then I'll give him a uh, metaphysics, probably. Yeah. And then level five. Yeah, I decided I needed more spells last time, so we might as well take more spells. So I say at level three, our spells are pretty bad as well. Because we got Grimoire Implant and what else at level 3? Oh, we have Bounding Missile. Oh, sorry, level 4. We have Bounding Missiles at level 4. No, we don't. Uh, we have the Flame Shield. Oh, right. Yeah, our level 4 and our level 5 spells are just atrocious. Um, I don't know. We could... I kind of want damage. Freeze Ray. Just a beam between two people. What did I pick? Clicked on something, but I don't know what it is. Oh, I can move it anyway, so that's fine. Um, Rates of spear, not too worried about that. Safeguard, wall of force. I think we'll take the, med we'll take the cloud. It's a 10 second AoE, so it does like 30 damage. And, oh, blast the frost, maybe. Yeah, it's a cone. It's not amazing, but... Is a damage ability, which I think is actually just all that we need him to have. There's something I can do. Oh, for saying there, I thought we had two levels, of course. but we didn't. All right, well, time to leave here. I think we'll keep the same uh, group for the next one. Fine. And that's all of our quests that we needed to hand in, I think. Yeah, we should be good. Right, uh, let's head out and then northwest, I think. My friend, 
You hide your face in a book while the beauty of the dead fire passes you by. A readied mind will be far more useful the next time we face dragons, cultists, or vampires. You are ready to face death. What of life, I say? If you had never experienced the pleasure in a good book, more's the pity. Hmm. Okay. Well, they're still not getting along. Oh, we should do a reputation uh, check. Or, like, how they're feeling with each other. So, to care who, we, we got a good relationship going. That's fantastic. A laugh, not so much. But generally, we're, we're okay with everyone. Everyone kind of likes us, which I think is good. Port Magie likes us the most, obviously. Along with Children of the Dawnstar. But that's fine. Nothing's too uh, amazingly crazy there. Uh, we then got Eddier. Still pretty much the same as last time. Likes the same people, dislikes the same people. Maya likes Takehu. Okay. Um, Takehu dislikes Maya and likes Zoti. And then Aloth dislikes most people, apart from Zoti. Okay. Right. Uh, let's head out by sea. Wait, do we need to resupply? Nah, we're good. We're, we're good. We could buy another ship, almost. We're almost at the point where we could upgrade. I don't think we need to. Oh, I do want to do that quest as well, but we'll, we'll uh, head out by sea. Uh, the, not the quest, I should have explained what quest it was, because I thought of one in my head and then I was like, oh, we should do that one, without actually telling you what it was. Uh, the one where we go to Fort Deadlight for the Principe. That seems like a good one to do. Right, um, next one we're doing is the, one of these, not that one, this one, yeah. Travel to the ruins um, to find a statue. A local cartographer discovered this island can be found by the statue of Helia, west of the throne room of the palace. Yeah, okay, according to Atefu, the Wahuku are protective of, is that the one I was looking for? No, that's, yeah, it's northeast. Uh, that's finding Okaizo. I say I don't want to do that one yet. I want to do Fort Deadlight. I think that's um I think that's an earlier game quest. We'll do Fort Deadlight. Okay, going to Fort Deadlight. Who am I bringing? Well, I'm bringing Seraphin. I'm gonna bring Eddie or Seraphin. I'm gonna bring Maya. And then one more. One more. Hmm. Who do we bring? I think we might bring a Loth. Yeah. So effectively all we've done is swap to Kehu for a Loth, but we'll do with that. Right, let's head out a little bit and then we'll uh, equip our ship because we need to put on Prince P colors, I think, but we can change that on the fly. Oh, actually now that I remember. Uh, can we do ship changes now? Yeah. Apparently I can only do that here. Anyone else I need to change around? Uh, no, they're all just 10. That's absolutely fine. Okay, um, Prince Peak colors I can put on whenever and I have uh, one set of them or two sets of them? Four sets of them. Never mind, we're good. I leave by C. Oh, we're because we're already left by C. Um, so there's Fort Deadlight. So you see how close it is to Port Magi? That's why I think it's um, pretty much just saying, you know, here's an early game quest to do. Right. Uh, and let's remind ourselves of the quest as well before we go straight into it. Um, also, the Archmage's Vault has become non-scary. Okay. It is one of these quests. Oh, oh, it's a Principe quest, isn't it? So it's in Principe. Blow the man down. Yes. Ben with his return to Fort Dead Light. Uh, um, he's the guy who attacked us at the start. The entrenched fortress occupies a small island in the southwestern region of Deadfire. All manner of pirate crews are there. Yeah, we basically have to talk our way in. That's fine. Right. If somebody has an injury... Oh, no. Our morale's fairly low. Can we do anything about that? We could probably give different... Um, Chip rations. Uh, let's switch Silverfin into the front and then... Also, do we... Oh, we have some alcohol, which might be the best way of doing some of that. 
Yeah, something like that. Although we also have fresh fruit, which I might stick in the front here. That'll make people a little happier. Right, head over this way. And now it's time to switch our colors. Um, right. We want to put on the Principe colors instead of the Deerwood colors. I mean, head over this way. But I just noticed on this side. Oh, these are our Triumphs. Okay, that's fine. Wait, we have the Triumph of Daria? Oh, interesting. I like that. He just uh, gave us one of those. Wonder if we can use that somewhere else as well. And then into Fort Deadlight. Just through the front door. Through, uh, through the distant haze of the sea mist and rocky shadows, Fort Deadlight rises over the horizon. Approaching a pirate stronghold is a risky venture, even for the most skilled of mariners. Any ship not flying a Principe flag that sighted in Deadlight shallows may be raided. Abaddon's uh, Iron Scroat Cap. Abaddon's Iron Scroat Cap. Them guns be even bigger than I remember. Abaddon being a god. The god of golems, machines, industry, strength, hope, and aspiration. Favoured most commonly among the labouring class, the golem is thought to have been one, uh, once been able to take a human resembling form as most of the other gods are, but then been somehow killed, only to forge himself back into existence inside the shell of an immense golem. Various accounts of his death that exist, none of them considered definitive. We also spoke to him in the White March DLC, and I think there was, uh, like, generally smiths would talk about Abaddon as well. Um, Seraphin looks up at the fortress from the deck and inhales through his teeth. I can be vouchsafing you, you with the guards, um, if you can get us to dock, without being blasted to bits thrice over. Otherwise, I'd be recommending the sneakiest approach you got. Well, I will hoist up a Principe flag and dock at Deadlight's port. With the Principe flag flapping wildly from your mast, you smoothly sail into port and moor up at the dock. The docks are crawling with sailors of all ages and races, many of them wearing mismatched battle-torn outfits, guns strapped to their thighs and chest. They load and unload cargo holds, arms brawny and grinning faces blistered, as some blistered as they laugh and curse and shout and hack phlegm onto the splintered boards of the, de of the dock. From the bustle, Principe guards emerge to hail your arrival. Satisfied with appearances, they nod you on and you make your way up to the fort's main gate. Alright, well, that was easy enough. We've just moved our way in. Now we just need to talk our way through everything. Okay. Play pirates? Let's play pirates. Nice. So, it's a whole area. Nice. Well, best hope you don't roll another pair then. Oh, they're playing a game of dice. We'll have that. Snake Eyes, Pondwin. Hello. How hey, might I help you out of a bit of money, squab? Care to join our fun? Or is it swilling information you're chasing? The pirate looks you over, eyeing the make of you. A sly smile curls at his mouth as he tosses a pair of dice to rattle over the cobblestone ground. Without so much a glance at the settling dice, he calls out their numbers. Cipher, perhaps? I'll play around. Now, before we get rolling, let me tell you the rules. You bet on high if you think when the dice settle, they'll count up to more than seven. You bet on low if you think the count will be less than seven. Both pay double or nothing. Lastly, you can also bet on seven. If the count is exactly seven, then you win four times the wager. A hundred pyres per roll of the dice. You sure you want to risk it? I'll bet on seven. Snake Eyes jiggles the dice in his hand. After blowing on them for luck, he casts the dice across the ground. The dice add up to eight. You lose, mate. What a shame. <laughs> he chuckles as he grabs the dice. Care for another roll? No. He shrugs one shoulder. Uh, one shoulder. Uh, he rolls a spare dice over the top of his fingers, making it appear and disappear with fluid flicks of the hand. I'm looking for Captain Benwith. I ain't my captain's keeper. And I know better than to ask what business you've got with Brutal Ben. He jerks his head once to the right. You might check the court for him. If he ain't target practicing, he's tickling the harpsichord or taking his swill. Two out of the three can be done there. 
But if you see him, don't fucking tell him I sent you. Very well. All right. Interesting. What we got up there? From the upper ramparts, a wooden crane suspends a pallet stacked with heavy and black casks over a cobblestone courtyard. The pallet groans, swaying sli slightly, while its Hempton egg rope creaks from the strain. I'll leave it for just now. I don't see any reason to uh, do that. We'll have the salt. What else have we got? Pirate, 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 buccaneer. Okay. Root, pirate. Celebrant. Okay. Another pirate. No nut Ned. Hello, no nut. You shopping for barkers or blades? Whatever. Right away. The bloody lynx. Okay, it is nine armor. That's a very high one for the recovery. And oh, nice. Okay. Grants blood price. Plus five to all defenses, uh when it where it becomes bloodied. Suit of mail seems to constrict and relax with the rhythm of a heartbeat. The armor has been worn by numerous warriors in countless battles. It is imbued with blood and malice of many owners as well as their victims. Over the long years, blood is yet to dry. It runs in a continuous it runs in continuous rivulets from between the tarnished links. Occasionally the mail will flex, hungrily pulling the black uh, pulling the blood back into itself, loath to part with its hard worn prize. Okay, anything else? Nah, that's it. Okay. And say I know your crew. Talking to me? Nah, they're just playing dice. That's the way up there. The dungeons to court. To forge. Okay, we'll have a look around the edge here. Absolutely fine. Ahoy, uh, Captain. I've got to come clean about something. And that'll be as good a time as not. Oh, really? Now's a good time, really? Fair, I'll get it. We'd be in a fortress filled with lawless types who'd murder us as soon as look at us. But hear me out. Much as I hate Benwith, the main reason I signed up with you were uh, to get here. To get a chance to look for a man named Romaro. Who is Romaro? Now, that'd be a longer story than we've got time for. Quick of it be that uh, Romaro's in trouble. The Prince should be have sent a ship hunter after him. And I've got a need and a half to find him first. I didn't see his ship, so probably not. But mayhaps we could keep a weather eye open for clues to his whereabouts. All right, I'll look for him. Hmm, okay. Who are you? Sedwin. Think this'll break me? Ha, <laughs> it won't. Spit on me, and I'll make you regret it. One day, surely. Why are you being punished? Those hagfish. Ben West's crew lashed me up to be, and I quote, a deterrent to insubordination. It's shark shit. All I did was filch one of their horns and blast it to start lung with. I wanted to see her get all worked up. Ben West's crew uses horn blast for an alarm? Well, sure. But shouldn't you know this, on account of you being a captain? She tilts her head back, gazing suspiciously at you from beneath her lashes. I used to sail for a Ferranti. He runs things differently. That he does, the master rogue. You should have come to us sooner. We're accepting of even old bloods if they're wanting to run fresh. I'll cut you loose. Not that I ain't grateful, but if Ben's crew spots me about, they'll be taking more than my pride next. Uh... Well, I'll let you go anyway. Suppose I'll do my best. He flicks you a sly smile in parting. Okay. Yeah? Well, hopefully she didn't get caught. I do want to head it back this way. It was their first hanging. Had the rope too long, so we cut the tosser's head right off. Huh. Ain't even possible, that. It is. I'm telling you, I saw it. Hmm, okay. Streaks of blood to coat the hem of this noose. I want to talk to Snake Eyes again. Hello, Snake Eyes. Came to watch another round. Yeah, I like to watch. He chokes, dropping the dice prematurely. They skitter across the cobblestones, then a cheer erupts from the gamblers as the dice settles on a sweeping win. Show's over. Buy in or shove off. Scowling, he snatches up the dice before reluctantly paying the winners. Oh. Well, that's pretty much just saying he cheats, and then, uh, you know, if we're watching, then he can't cheat. Alright, I got it. I got it. Been slower than two slugs swiving since Aldi's put uh, the lid on it. Winds will be here. changing soon enough. 
This pirate Bedworth can't resist throwing another bash for long. Mm, okay. Mineo, hello. He groans, too weak to lift his head. Alright, well, they were definitely talking about Benwith over here. Or Benfith over here. Come! We've plenty to share. Alright, well, I'll have what you have. Fine. Let's speak to Ruddy Fair. Whoa, there. Watch your step. The stones are a mite slippery. The pirate stumbles when he turns, slapping a palm onto the table to steady himself. In the process, he knocks a tanker to the ground, spilling a frothy beverage. Here's to ourselves. May the gods grant us more gold and luck than we can imagine. He raises his monk high overhead. This is a celebratory drink. You bet. Our bosun just brought a treasure map. We're saluting to our future prosperity, we are. We'll be making a proper raucous if Ungwith the Craghearted wasn't such an accursed downer. What's got Ungwith the Craghearted all twisted up? She loathes any type of disorder, especially that of the loud variety. We get too wild and you watch, she'll be stomping down here to yell at us. Alright, farewell. Okay. Let me just, uh... Didn't take me long to work this one out. Drop the ring in our personal inventory, so I, I remember it. I think it looked better by comparison. Hello. Come for a drink with us. Twenty Pyre says I can drink you under the table. You can pay to try. Drink up, and we'll see who's left standing. All right. Let's get swilling. First up's a round of a deer and mead. One of the more sober pirates pours two pints of the thick, sweet brew. I'll drink it. You not bet the tankard and take a deep swallow. Too much loosened, the brew clogs your throat. You choke, spewing half a mouthful onto the table. Don't take it personally, pal. It's a fine way to lose 20 pyres. Laughing, the drunkard turns to brag to his crewmates, having already forgotten his claim, to claim his winnings. Uh, alright, yeah. well we'll do it again then. Come for a drink with us. 20 pyres. Gonna go through with it this round. Yeah, definitely. Let's get swilling. First up's a round of a deer and mead. Oh yeah, let's drink this one. Pretend to drink. Not a bad start, not at all. He nods to you respectfully before guzzling down his own pint. Next round's grog, not just any grog, mind you. This batch is fermented with gunpowder. Definitely not drinking that. Not many can handle a whole pint of gunpowder grog. He lifts his brows, both surprised and impressed. Then he struggles through his own drink before offering you a snide, wet-looking grin. Nah, the best for the last. We'll be having us a bit of hangman's blood. If this doesn't knock you on your backside, nothing will, I fear. What's Hangman's blood made of? You mean the way our crew makes it? A bit of this and a pinch of that, all mixed in a hogshead of pickled corpse fruit. Or oh, it's been known to kill a man, or at least his breath. Oh yeah, I'll pretend to drink this one. At first the pirate merely stares, then he nervously licks his lips with trembling fingers, reaches for his own pipe for the of the corrosive concoction. Flame me for crow's bait, should I ever turn craven. In a surge of courage, the drunkard gulps down his own pint. His chest, pint, his chest heaves as he clinks the cup's bottom, and a cocky grin begins to s a slow si sweep of his lips. But his smile freezes halfway. Caught in a pained twist, he slowly begins to tilt backwards. He topples to the ground, out cold. Shush you, Rumpots, or Cragart will be down here again. Right. Shush you, Rumpots. Or Cragart will be down here. Far from here. No good right up them stairs. Raucous, what a particular smell it does. Hello. Oh, well, why, why For the last go? time, pipe down. I've seen. Is it just you. me or are Flog off. We ain't hurt in nothing. Can I speak? I ought to throw you in irons. Think I can't? Think Ben would care? What happens to you? I don't think Aldi's oh. would like it, none. We've no. talked our way up here. Aldi's isn't here, is she? Oh, the, these are off limits. So Tom. shut up. All right. Uh, no, I'm, I'm reloading. I'm reloading. I missed the point. So, I'm gonna reload. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, she wasn't the only guard. I get it. I get it. Now, now I know the rules to this game. Abaddon's iron screw cap. You be the right hard bastard I took you for after all. Why in the blackest hell are you clomping around so loud? How be it? You're not allowed up here, you no-good fuddlers. 
Hey, no need to get testy. No, I'd best escort you back. Follow me if you want to keep living. Try to sneak past if you want to die. All right. So I got a drink. Then she will come down <sighs> right here. Right, wonder they ain't strung you up, Cap. Best not be pressing your fortune. That's if I want to get to the forge. Okay. Well, I don't know why I'd want to get to the forge just yet, so I'm gonna not go that way. But useful to know. Here we got brute, rogue, brute, buccaneer, pirate, Hillebrand. Um, well, let's uh, let let's go to the forge. Let let's be bold. Hey, ready for? Shush you, Rumpots, or Cragart will be down here again. Oh, have I just lost my chance to do it because I saved after? Yeah. Okay. We'll leave that be. Chances are we're going to have to kill everyone anyway. The court. Yeah, I'm not the best at stealth. Just going to put put that one out there. Come here, Captain. Before I go introducing you to Siri, I should uh, mention something. Yeah, I know. I have to hold down the home button and then she'll appear. Seraphin frowned, scratching at his furred cheek. Go on. I might have said things to Siri when I last dropped anchor at Deadlight. Just lovers words savvy. But I can't say I rightly lived up to him. I ain't saying he's a problem, just a possible wrinkle in the old chart. <laughs> oh, so she'll be upset. All I'm saying is, uh, you see her go for a pistol, you best step away from me. Okay. Oh, now that I remember... Talking about things for him. Uh, we have a blunderbuss for him. We have a second one. We have the kitchen stove. Taking out dual wielders blunderbusses. Can I upgrade that more? I could, yeah. Granting it all sorts of things. Costs a lot of money to upgrade, but I could. Anyway. Quick save. And we'll have a look around. Pirate, 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 pirate. Pirate, pirate. Well, it's brute, but okay. Siri the Siren. Oh, what's in the piano? The harpsichord is finely uh, crafted, detailed, and lavish. And lavish, but the keys are well worn. Inspect it. A row of wooden keys links a exposed set of strings. Tapping the keys requires a small quill to strum each associated string. I'm not going to rig a bomb, but I see what it's getting at here. I see what it's getting at. Hey Siri, hello. The Orland's large eyes grow larger as you approach, then narrow to a sharp edge. Her hands briefly ball into fists before finding the way to her hips. With a sharp twist of her head, she flips seaweed green hair over one shoulder. Look who finally washed back up ashore. The edge to her words matches the sharpness of her teeth. Seraphin winces. Ahoy there, Siri. Uh, miss me? Did I miss you? She growls. <sighs> A low, prolonged sound. Like a fish misses water, you gutless bastard. For the first few weeks, anyhow. Till it turned to confusion and worry. You said you'd write every night, didn't you? Then where were the birds or the boats with your poems and pages? I can't look away from the shipwreck. Siri, sweet honey art. I scribbled you missives day and night. Declarations of passion, sonnets in songs. Or on account of me being at sea, I never had the opportunity to post them. Oh, I'm certain. I'm certain I should believe every word of that blarney. About as certain as I am that you're a snake-tunned philandra worth little more than a tug in the rug. I plundered you up a pair of fine, very fine, snakeskin boots. With that tooling you like round the cuffs and all. But the gentleman sprung a leak, and they ended up thoroughly sodden. He scoffs and he looks to you with a shrug. <laughs> Tell her, Cap. Well, let's see how we're going to go for it. I'm sorry for keeping Seraphin at sea for so long, Siri. As Captain, the responsibility rests with me. Are you meaning to tell me that you've not dropped anchor at Fort Deadlight in the last eight months? Her furry brows twist as she examines you. Well, come to have a look at you. I can't say I've ever seen you before. This your captain then now? What happened to Ferrante? She cants her attention back to Seraphin. Ferrante still be sailing the seas, right? Is the rain and twice as frigid. Just gave me a bit of furlough to engage myself in more personal pursuits. 
Such as an emerald haired lass who ain't never once left my thoughts. A warm smile blossoms across Siri's lips before she banishes the expression. Now don't go thinking I've forgiven ye a lick, Seraphin. I know you didn't come here looking for me, cause if you had, you'd have come with a bottling without your sodding captain. He points a blunt finger at you. Oh, you ain't wrong, lass. Wish it weren't true, but it is. He sighs. Now, why don't you be telling me what you want so I can be shot of you for good? Seraphin nods. Aye, lass. The captain's got an ask or two about deadline. But first, I need to know. You remember Romaro? Sail with me on a sorcerer. Aye, I remember Romaro. You think I've gone wet in the head or something? Your words have always been as flowery for him as they were for me. Seraphin claps once, grinning. It weren't so long ago he shipped out, come to think on it. Do you know where he went? Can't rightly say. Left in a hurry, I think. Or at least he were here one day and gone the next. Not that he ever mixed much with the sods here. Why was he here at the fort? Whale tells you, let me know. Rumour were he went mutinous. Rage flashes behind your eyes and your blood goes hot. Interesting. Oh, so that's um, that's Seraphin, uh, like his emotions kind of coming over to us, I think. Oh, sideways pickle or shit and half. Seraphin slams a fist into the nearby wall and Siri flinches. Wait till I find a whale fuck mother spreading this rancid shit. Teach them the very meaning of keelhaul, I will. Don't know the truth of it myself. I have been Romaro himself started the rumours. Gave him his privacy, certain. Even here, mutineers make no friends. Give my thanks, lass. Truly. And many more besides. He bows deeply, braided hair brushing the floor. I'll keep it in your pantaloons, you randy swab. You had any other questions, Captain? Happy to oblige the person hauling this blue bastard away from Fort Deadlight. Just who is this Romero person Seraphin's looking for? Seraphin rolls his eyes and crosses his arms. You don't know? That's so, I'm thinking it's not my place to tell you. I need to know what Seraphin's getting my crew into. They both crewed the sorcerer for a season or six. Romero were like a father to Seraphin, or so he's told me. Taught him the mariner's trade. More than that, you'd have to ask him yourself. Were there something else you wanted? We're looking for Benworth. That rotten fuck what brought you to Fort Deadlight. I hope you're looking to rough him round a bit. Maybe dangle him over the bulwarks. What did he do to upset you? Bastard were playing the keys not five nights ago. I joined in, and me not even setting out a pail for coin, neither. He stops and tells the whole room that me voice were more harpy than siren. Of course, that sets everyone to laughing. She scowls, arms crossed and shoulders hunched. Playing the keys? Aye, that half mast sack of soiled linens can't leave alone a chance to show off his talent at the harpsichord. He's got chops, I can't fault him that. But no manners to speak of. She snorts. When does Benworth play the harpsichord? You think this be some big city cabaret type establishment? There's no schedule, mate. Benwith comes down when the party's loud enough to shake his sheets harder than the oars he keeps up there. When, uh, where can we find him? Benwith blows into deadlight. He mostly stays locked up in his quarters. A few whores in his bunk and a whole mess of muscle outside his berth. He's so protected you'd think he'd got flawless diamonds betwixt his legs instead of the pair of sweat, wet, rotten figs he's got. Suppose the price of being a first-class ass like Benwith is living in fear of someone slitting your gizzard. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I'd hate if something happened to him. Anyway, that's all I need to know about Benwith. Aye, mate, as you please. Very well. All right. We'll have all the food, obviously. We'll need to continue uh, asking around, see what else we got over here. Buccaneer, buccaneer. Free stuff. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Grimhand Darig's crew hasn't been back in weeks, apparently. What, what, what else about them? Maybe the floating hangman got them. A ghastly and rotted ship that haunts the dead fire, manned by an undead crew, this vessel's rumored to become the seas and uh, sails veiled within unnatural fog. We'll keep an eye out for that fog then. Uh, crew rosters, wanted posters, and assorted maps lusted this notice board. Okay, a lot of guards. 
Hey, Murphy. Damn me, the cops run dry. Welcome one and welcome all. Find me a bottle and I'll be your finest loving pal. <laughs> she hiccups into her fist, then pounds it on her chest to loose an impressive belch. What says you, lad? Looking for Benwith. She wipes Grog from her mouth with the back of one hand. Aye, you're likely to find him here from time to time. But at the moment, he's staying up top at Eldie's private quarters. Why is that? Well, they're real nice. At your pointed look, she shrugs. Oh, you meant because the captain's second in command at Eldie's. When she's off plundering, it's him who runs a deadlight. Ben's locked down the inner halls in the upper ramparts. No one but his own crew's allowed within. He's temping the fork down because he doesn't want to get in trouble with Aldi's again. Last time, we might have got too rowdy. <laughs> he snickers into her cup. But executing all those political prisoners sure was fun. <laughs> Mick, uh, murky hiccups behind her hand. Why is Ben with avoiding the fort's common areas? He's brutal when he's sober and he's bloody mad when he drinks. So he's keeping to himself, I'd guess. Eldie's ain't a pushover, but she don't like Benny's increasing aggressiveness. If he gets out of hand again, she might hang him by his squishy bits from the bowsprit of his own ship. Say I wanted to draw Benworth down here. And why would you want to be doing that? He hiccups. <laughs> to talk. That's what they all say. Think you're the first to want to slide a knife between Ben's ribs. She shrugs. It ain't no skin off my nose if you want to die. Ben loves him some good festivities. Blood or booze doesn't matter so long as it's flowing freely. <laughs> That's why Aldi's is always having to rein him in. Long as it don't get too out of hand, the captain will probably join us rather than shutting things down. I know how to get us started, but you'll be doing the legwork. Seeing as I don't fancy a punishment should the captain get mad. What do we need to get a ruckus started? The more booze, the rowdier we principally get. The better the booze. Well, that's when the real fun starts. I happen to know. Deadlights recently received a shipment of excellent God Killer's rum. It's reserved for Aldi's private stock. Snatch us a barrel, will ya? They're outside on the eastern rampart at the base of the crane. Careful, though. The steers will be guarded by Benwith's own crew, and they're in a sour mood. What will Benwith do if Eldis's rum is stolen for a party? He'll save her and guzzle it with the rest of us. Then later find someone to blame. How can I avoid the guards and the ramparts? Most direct route to the ramparts is up the stairs by the eastern towers. Ancret's on post there. She's a bit of a gambler, likes a good bet, but loses more than she ought. Oh yeah, Snake Eye's got her for quite a lot of coin. Seems he's good at rigging, and I don't mean sales. <laughs> he lets out a long belch. Alright. I'm listening. Very well. Interesting. So we can't head through that way. What we can do is we could rig the piano, get this alcohol. Let's get the alcohol first, then we can think about rigging the piano. We would also head through the forge if we wanted to. But we've got to... Yeah, we've got to get the person out of the way. I see. Hmm. Can I do it there? Shush you, Rumpots. Or Cragart will be down here again. Mm, I can't. Okay. Well, we'll head over this way. That's fine. Just an option locked off to us. Absolutely fine. Head up here. Hey, Snake Eyes. Want to chat? Came to watch another round. You win most of these games you run, don't you? Oh, you wouldn't be implying there's more to it than my superb luck and skills. With a chuckle, he pats his left pocket of his pants, a nervous gesture. Cause accusations such as that are likely to see you whipped and pickled, my mate. You're wanted to stir up trouble, but I know you got nothing on me. Sod off before I remove you. I hear unlucky Ancret owes you quite a debt. That she does. She's my biggest loser, hence the name. It's a shame, really, how she always fumbles the dice. It's cause she's got those burly hands, surely. Takes odds to win, but she couldn't roll a seven even if our brutal captain put a pistol to her brow. He rolls a spare die over the top of his fingers, making it appear and disappear with the with fluid flicks of his hands. Very well. Hmm. Okay. We could just try going up. See what we can do. Play some dice. 
Is that something in there? No, there's something we could steal, but we're not. Can't going say to. I recognize your fishy mug, which means you ought not to be up here. Uh, I heard your snake eyes quite a debt. Who told you that? Was it Condwin? That chunk of rotted hagfish. He ought to know when to keep his mouth shut. What did he say? Precisely. I heard. Uh, oh, wait. That you can't roll a seven to save your life. Yeah. I'll put a whinger through his nose holes. <laughs> see what he says then. Yeah, see you later. You're a dead one now. It doesn't sound like you've come to settle your debt. So I've got a game to run if you don't mind. You lovely squid shit. I know about the rig die. What? What slammerky lies? I'm cleaner than a spit shine culverin, don't make no doubt of that. I've lost enough to you. Up here. But it don't got to oh, include fantastic. my pride. I'm all in you to the dungeons. You're right there. Oh. Straight to the dungeons, huh? Well, we'll head this way. Being stealthy this time, you see. He's buying them crates. They're crane cap. Then the casks are rum we be after. Consider it done. Can't take any more because we're already full. Gunpowder barrel. Alright, do we have to roll the crane up or something? Or did we already get the rum? Uh. Unless it's just normal rum, but I don't think it is. I think it's probably this one. Yeah. This calls for a subtle touch. Definitely. There. What did I do? God killer's rum. Nice. So we could just head straight up to command here. Don't think it'd be that difficult, really. But you know what? Leave it to me. We'll, we'll, we'll play it as, as we are meant to play it. Oh my god, I'm happy I started moving. Whew. That was tough. Stop sneaking. Head over this way. We have the God Killer's Rum. Let's definitely go rig the piano, or the harpsichord, and then we'll uh, start the party. Hopefully rigging it doesn't just instantly uh, blow it up or something. What I want it to do is for him to walk over, start playing it, and then for- Then we'll be behind these doors, no doubt about it. Yeah. Uh, rig a bomb to the harpsichord. After glancing around to ensure no one's watching, you place a bomb inside the harpsichord and rig one of its strings as detonator. Harpsichord emits a sad twanging sound when you depress one of its keys. Okay, interesting. Hey, let's get this party started. Might that be my sweetest new crony, bringing me a fresh cask of bitter booze? I tell you, chum, I amaze my spirit if not my ship. <laughs> the pirate whips her head around at your approach, swaying slightly on her feet. What says you, lad? This the right rum? Only way to know for sure is to give it a taste, eh? Let's just have a quick sweep. Burn him, blast my bones, yeah! This will sink the festivities into deeper waters, all right? <laughs> Drink up, Tars, to all better friendship. All right. Oh, right. Sluice the ivories and run freely the rum. How comes it? We're having an uproarious time. You said Benwith would be here. He's not. Well, we're having a good time. Clearly, the party's not wild enough yet. <laughs> we need a bigger, wilder party if we want to whet Benwith's appetite. We get wild enough and you watch. Ben will even play us some tunes. That's his harpsichord over in the corner. Well, let's turn this party hog wild. Me and you, buddy old pal. We share the same soul, I think. What we need is some stew to match our spirits. But not just any stew. It has to be Cookie Mainer specially spiced stew. Elbowing you in the ribs, he winks exaggeratedly. What I mean is, it's got a phantasmal kick to it. Cookie's kitchens are in the northern side of the dungeons, beyond the powder stores, right in the belly of our fort. The lower floor's locked down, though, so sneaking past the guards might prove difficult. Tell me more about Benwith's harpsichord. He stole it, no surprise there. And he plays it like a godsend from hell. Best thing I ever heard aside from a man's moans in the air. Did you know when you... Oh, we were discussing Benny's rapturous fingers. Not mine. He plays like a hurricane night after night. 
Now do we get the harder he pounds those keys? He can't help it. The preening sprat. Guards? They like debauchery as much as the rest of us. So they might be inclined to leave their posts if they knew what a grand time we're having up here. I'm listening. Okay, farewell. Things have certainly gotten lively. Oh, disapproval from the law. Surprise, surprise. As long as the third thing we need is not from the forge, I'll be absolutely happy. If it is, I'm going to be severely disappointed. Because we've already failed our way of getting into there. Anyway, dungeons. Hopefully we're able to just walk through the dungeons. I don't know. We could see. We're going to see the kook anyway. The brig be to the south. We'll just go for a bit. No one will notice we're gone. <laughs> yeah, okay. We got rid of the guards. Fine. I will definitely have everything that we can lay our hands on. But we will sneak. Well. I see where you're going with that. There. Nice. All of that's ours. That stuff. So right in the belly of their fort, it said. Okay. Oh, there's Cookie uh, Mania. Do I hear a mouse scratching, scratching? Hello. A portly woman st startles at your approach. As she downswings her meat lever, she nearly catches her fingers. Glowering, she more carefully resumes hacking at what looks to be a slab of ribs. Who are you? And what are you doing here? Only Benwith's crew has access to my kitchens. Not that I care, really. Speak up so I can hear you. Um, well, give me a hogshead of stew. It's about time they sent someone for it. It only keeps for a fortnight. Let me add the special ingredient. The cook shifts a dark powder into the soup, stirring it quickly before she dumps the cauldron into a waking cask. She gives you a wink before rolling the barrel over. Farewell. Yeah, all right, well, that was easy. There's definitely more to explore, but I'm deliberately, you know, holding off. I suspect things may be easier once Benwith is, uh, gone rid of. Don't send me to the forge next. Come on. I keep hearing a noise every time we go over there. It's kind of weird. Anyway. We do need to go to the forge. We have one option, which is that... I use my amazing stealth skills to get there, but I don't really want to have to resort to that. Hey, Murky. Well, if it ain't my fond and feckless friend. Wait, no, I didn't mean that. My tongue gets a tad twisted when I'm too far into the cups. You'll have to pardon my lack of wits. Her lips sheen from her drink when she lazily grins. What says you, lad? I have the special stew. Things are all looking grand here. She leans forward to sniff the steaming stew and nearly topples into the cask. And they're about to get better. <laughs> Distribute the stew. Eat hearty, you bone idol chums. Be merry and wild. I might be going cross-eyed. How many fingers am I holding up? What's this I hear? Think you'll be having a fight without me? To luck! And a hot fight! And a good captain, brutal Ben! Oh, aye! You swabs want to hear me play, dear? Yeah. Play it loud and long, Ben. Aye, oh, show them how it's done. Lend your ears for utter bliss. A sweeter sound you never heard. Orders. Is he? He's toast. A toast to brutal Ben. <laughs> he's what blasted us. Best tell the crew. Best, he's dead. Best tell the crew. Well, I'll have the loot. Ooh, Miss Queen's leathers. Nice. Oh, I like those. I'll have all of that. Hmm. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Well, first things first. It'd be. Very subtle. We're going to wear his leathers. The eight reflex from it as well. That's, that's, that's nice. 
Oh, they, they are good. They are good. It kind of makes me want to change our loop, though, because the black and gold doesn't really go with our purple too well. We gotta change it up. We go black. Hmm. We could go... I do want to go gold as our main one. Nah, no, let's go black and gold. Oh, or just close it. Yeah, black and gold. And it needs to be just a little bit bright. Yeah, we'll go like that. There we go. Suits me, don't you think? Definitely, definitely. Right, so we've done it. Was that our, our quest done? Yeah, they just asked us to kill him. And we did it. Oh yeah, well, no point sneaking. But we can head around this way now. This calls all for of this sort of stuff. There. Ooh, look at that, oh, yeah. more stuff. Ooh, this way? Now what have we got here? Oh, I do believe I'll recognize these god's damn chest. He kneels by the chest, running his paws across it. By Andra's salty bosom. Romaro hold this chest from one end of the dead fire to the other. Any clues in there? He flips open the lid to reveal an empty chest. Seraphin doesn't seem disappointed, however. He reaches into the chest and gropes about before being rewarded with a clinking sound. A false bottom slides out from the chest, containing a single folded piece of parchment. Seraphin wipes it out and holds it to his nose, inhaling deeply. What does it say? Seraphon unfolds the letter, his large yellow eyes flowing over it. He clears his throat and begins to read. Dear X, <laughs> that be me. I knew you'd seek me out. Please abandon the trail here. I've fashioned this predicament for my own, and I'd not have you lock its weight round your own ankles. If you find yourself imperiled, seek Udina at Magic Water. She can help. Seraphim su falls silent, staring at the page for a while longer. You hear his breath catch, and he looks up, his expression carefully blank. Seems like there was more in that letter. Aye, there'd be a word or two more, but uh, nothing useful to us. He folds the letter over. You know what? I'm not going to steal it from him. You don't have to tell me. Actually, you know what? No. We are going to steal it from him. We're curious to a fault. That's one of our things. Curious to a fault. You snatch the letter out of Seraphim's hands. He looks shocked and angry for a moment, then purses his lips and takes a breath. He turns his back to you. The end of the letter reads, I wish you a long and prosperous life. You carry with you all I could have imparted, while my legacy may otherwise be reduced to shame. Know that you remain the exception. Yours are... Do you know who uh, Undine is? I don't know Udina from Ward Mage, but Magic Waters, I know like my own fucking name. When I were a wee lad, fresh on the sorcerer, Romaro would treat me to the luminous bathhouse at Nekitaka. He grins as he gently closes Romaro's chest, a hand lingering upon the polished wood. Oh, the water there shimmered like dawn on the open sea, and I, <laughs> full flush with the poetic creativity of youth, called it magic waters. I know you don't owe me the favour, Captain, but if we could find our way to that bathhouse, I'd not hold it against you. The lesson, of course, uh, you asked. He winks. I wouldn't turn down and dip in the baths, but everything else he said is just awful. Uh, for now, though, we've got plunder and pillage before us, I. I. Yeah, and the last thing, whatever's in here, an FC, FCC of or whatever of imps. Huh. Well, ooh, I do want to grab this. that just because I, I saw it earlier and was trying to hover with the mouse over it, but I think I'm going to end the episode here. Thank you for watching, and next time we'll explore some of the areas we weren't allowed into. See you then. Goodbye.